going to be walking you through our superstar windshield repair system with speed lock technology. We're going to be working on this vehicle here. We've got a couple of brakes to fix. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do with this glass is we're going to prep it before we set our tools on the glass. But what you need to look for first is the temperature of the glass. If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to work on. If it's too cold, meaning below freezing, you need to heat the glass up. So what we're going to actually do, we have this within that range, temperature range. We're going to take our probing tool and we're going to go ahead and flex this brake to check the volatility of the actual repair. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And what you're looking for is you're looking for any of the cracks in the repair uh, to move or flex. If they do flex, you know you have to be a little bit more careful when you're doing the repair. This repair looks real good. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to clean out the pit area. So I'm going to take our probe. We're going to remove that tip, flip it over so you have a sharp side, a blunt side and a sharp side. And we're going to go ahead and just clean out that center of that repair with any loose debris. Now we're on to our next step. So once we've cleaned out the pit area of this repair, the next thing to do is decide whether or not you need to drill the repair. Typically, if you can feel the pit area where the rock hit the glass, you do not have to drill. Uh, I can feel that pit on this repair, so typically we would not, but for the sake of this training video, we're going to go ahead and drill this just to show you how that works. I have our Dremel drill, and I have a burr in that. You go ahead and place the burr in the Dremel drill, and you lock that collet. The next thing you do is you have a high and a low speed on this drill. We like to drill on a lower speed because it saves the bit, makes the bit last longer. And what we're going to do is we're going to drill about a sixteenth into that center of that repair. Let's get started. access point to set our tools up and actually allow our resin to flow into that repair. Now that we have that drilled and we're getting ready to set our tools up on the glass, we're going to take our inspection mirror and we're going to place that on the inside of the glass so we can actually see what we're doing from the outside of the vehicle. You just want to position that mirror right over the top of that brake. Alright, so we're, we're ready to put our windshield repair superstar equipment and attach it to the glass. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this blue bridge. This bridge basically holds the injector on the surface of the glass. And, and we're going to start by taking and unscrewing or backing out our leveling screws on that bridge uh, to where... Um, you, you can't back them out any farther. Uh, it'll butt up against those little rubber tips. Once we've done that, then we're going to go ahead and take our Superstar injector body, and we're just going to get that injector started into the bridge. So just a couple of turns there. Well, now that we've got that bridge prepped, we're going to attach it to the glass. Now it uses a flip suction cup, so this little lever here when, you, when it's flipped over, attaches the blue bridge to the glass. So our goal now is to kind of position the bridge on the glass while looking in the mirror to f make sure that the center, the white O-ring, lines up with the center of that break. Once we're close to being positioned there, we're going to go ahead and give that suction cup a flip. And now our tool is attached to the glass. Now that we've attached the tool to the glass and we're positioned right over the center of the repair, we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring our injector body and screw it in until it just makes contact with the surface of the glass. And then we're going to go ahead and bring our two leveling screws down until they make contact with the glass. When you have those three pieces positioned properly, we're going to give our injector body one additional turn. And then we're going to make sure these two leveling screws are secured to the glass. Now that the injector body is sealed against the glass, you'll notice that the white O-ring, 
that is sealing against the glass is evenly compressed around the edge, about a sixteenth of an inch, and that's what you're looking for. All right, now we're going to take our injector plunger, and you'll notice that there's two brown O-rings. Um, this piece is actually going to fit inside the injector body, which we have attached to the glass. But before we do that, we're going to take a small amount of our HV resin, which comes in a small bottle, but you can also order it in a larger one. And that's going to lubricate those seals before we actually put it into the injector body. All right, the next step that we're going to walk through is going to be introducing our windshield repair resin into the brake. And we're going to be doing that by applying it right down the top of the injector body. For this repair, we're going to be using our MV resin. Uh, you'll want to consult our catalog or our website for the appropriate resin based on the temperature you're working in. Let's go ahead and uh, put a couple drops of resin in this guy. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to apply five drops of resin right down the top of that injector body. The next step in our windshield repair procedures here is to insert our injector plunger into the injector body. We're going to do that by opening our blue release pin, inserting our plunger, and then lining up that release pin so that it makes contact inside our actual speed lock channel. Next, we're going to open our air release valve we're going to push our plunger until it bottoms out, close our air release valve, and draw our plunger back and lock it in place with giving it a quarter turn. And that's going to hold this injector in a vacuum stage. Let the tool sit in vacuum for one minute. Next, we're going to move to a pressure cycle which we do that by opening our air release valve, closing our air release valve, and transitioning the plunger from an upward state to a lower state and locking it in one of two channels, a higher and lower depending on how much pressure you'd like to achieve. Let that sit for two minutes in a pressure state. So after two minutes of pressure, we're going to evaluate our repair. If it needs more time to get the resin into the, the cracks, we can go to a second vacuum and a second pressure cycle. We're going to do that by opening our air release valve, turning our plunger, pushing our plunger down, locking our air release valve, and drawing the plunger back into a second vacuum cycle. We'll let that sit for one minute. So now, after one minute of, of vacuum, we're going to open our air release valve, close our air, air release valve, and drop our plunger down into a second pressure. And we're going to let that sit for two minutes. ready to move to our curing process, so we're going to go ahead and take our 12-volt curing lamp. We're going to plug it into the, the port on the vehicle. That should power that, and we're ready to go ahead and, and cure the repair from the outside. So before we remove the injector from the, the brake, we're going to cure the repair while the injector is holding the resin into the repair under a pressure cycle. We're going to do that by holding the lamp on each side of this injector for two minutes. Now that we've cured under pressure on each side of the injector, we're going to go ahead and remove the tool from the glass. We're going to do that by opening our air release valve to release our pressure. And then we're going to go ahead and lift our locking uh, suction cup and remove the tool. There may be a little residual 
um, of resin that wants to run down the glass, and you're going to just wipe the bottom of that uh, off the surface. The next step in our repair process is going to be to use a small amount of our pit filler, which is a resin that fills the center impact point of that repair so that you have a smooth surface when you're finished. We're going to take a small amount of that product and we're going to lay that right above the actual impact point and allow that to run down into the center portion of that repair. When it runs down into the center, we're going to take a curing tab and run a curing tab or a lay a curing tab right over the top of that pit filler. So now that we've added our pit filler and we've put our curing tab on the surface, we're going to go ahead and reattach our curing lamp and cure the center of this repair for an additional three minutes. Now that our uh, center of our repair has been cured, we're going to remove our pit square from the surface and we're going to go ahead and use a razor blade and scrape the excess amount of pit filler off the surface of the glass until we're flush to the surface. We're going to use our razor blade in a perpendicular motion to the glass to do that. Let's get started. Now that we've scraped off all of our um, excess resin here, we're going to go ahead and use a little bit of pit gloss to shine the center pit area of the repair, and then we're going to be finished. Thanks for watching GT Tools Superstar with Speedlock Technology training video. Visit us at gtglass.com for further details.